What I want to do now is build on what you've already learned and take you to the next level. What about you're doing capital arts, but not one at a time, like you know, once a month. I want to be generating these things routinely because we do this, you know, dozens or hundreds or thousands of times a day. So now we're talking about how do you automate, how to create a series of cap alerts, or what we call a cap news feed. As you can tell, I don't speak Spanish. Is this the right word for news feed? You know what a news feed is? You know what a blog is? A web log? No? OK. Or news, yeah. In Spanish, alimentador? Is that the word they would use for a news feed? It sounds to me like somebody eating dinner. It's the right word? OK. I, I, when I tried the automatic translation, I got a lot of different <laughs> proposals from Google Translate and et cetera on what's a news feed. Actually, the most common one was news feed. <laughs> it's like, oh, so you just use the English. OK. Oh, let me, let me dwell on this for a second. So this is the uh, diagram you've now seen at least three times from me. But I want you to change the way you think of the center of it. I want you to think of the center of this as a newsroom. Flowing into the newsroom are news stories, various reports about hazard threats or events. Flowing out of the newsroom, we have news items reporting on those things. And in this case, the things flowing out are all in cap format. So news comes in, cap goes out. And in that sense, we get to the idea of the set of news items flowing in is a news feed. Now, the term comes from news wire services, Associated Press, United Press International, Reuters, a bunch of sources of news that were delivered over what used to be uh, telegram, right? telex services. Remember the really old movies? You see this little box sitting there going, and this little papers churning out to say, news flash, big to the Godzilla attacks Tokyo, right? That whole thing is ripped off, given to the presenter who then reads it. We call it rip and read, right? So that news wire idea has carried over into the internet, and it's called a news feed for that reason, news wire service terminology. So our first topic is going to be really simple syndication. Again, it's a holdover term from news and news wires. Syndication, that's when one reporter's story gets picked up by a lot of different um, newspapers. RSS, really simple syndication. It's a standardized XML document. Ooh, that's good. CAP is XML. The news feed is also XML. And why is it XML? Because it's got the data and the information in the same message, for exactly the reason that we use it in CAP. RSS is specifically for publishing frequently updated works, such as news items and blogs. You know, blog stands for web log entries. Now, let me point out, many bloggers, you may be surprised to learn, are not certified journalists. They just publish stuff. But they still use the same format for the news feeds. Web logs and legitimate news all use RSS. Again, the XML uh, and its adoption by RSS is so that you can have automated processing as well as being readable by humans. RSS is used in a different 
mode of communications. You are familiar with surfing around on the web. When you do that, you are in what we call client server. Anybody know what client server is? Are those they may, IT persons raise your hands. You know what client server is? OK. It means the server is sitting there waiting for people to talk to it. And when people come, it responds. It's just psh, request, response, request, response. Publish, subscribe, which is used by RSS, is not that. Publish, subscribe has two different timing ideas. Publish on one kind of time sequence and subscribe on a completely different time sequence. What's the publish time sequencing? The publisher puts out new stuff whenever they have new stuff. Maybe the last one I did was a week ago, and then I had two in the last hour. Doesn't matter. Ad hoc, whenever I have stuff, I publish. Subscribe is by choice of the subscriber, how often do you want to check for new stuff? Typically not sooner than once a minute, but it could be anything like once a month. Let's say, for example, what you are subscribing to is a blog of recipes that use avocado. Do I need that once a minute? Probably not. Maybe once a month is fine. That's as much as I want to subscribe to that. So it's my choice how often I subscribe. The really cool thing about publish subscribe in our context, which is emergency alerting, is with publish subscribe, you never miss a thing. Because each time the subscriber goes to see, you got anything for me, they get everything since they, that individual, last successfully downloaded stuff from that feed. Okay? Remember, I said emergency management means being aware you're going to get interruptions, right? So if you're bouncing along on a fire truck and you've been out of touch with the internet for the last three minutes, as soon as you reconnect, you don't want to find out that, no, no, that the fire has actually moved now and you didn't catch it because you were out of touch during that time. With publish, subscribe, you find out that, oh, here's the sequence of all the alerting that happened even when you weren't there to hear it. Okay, so we don't lose things with publish, subscribe. Key feature. So already two things why we use RSS with CAP. First, it's also XML, which is good. For the same reason that we use it in CAP, it's because that way you can get the data and the information in the same message. And secondly, it's publish, subscribe, which we really want. Okay, that's the reason that we really like RSS and we use it uh, quite a bit. This is what it looks like. Uh, again, don't try to concentrate on the things that's got the angle brackets again. But Suffice it to say, there's a single channel uh, in the news feed. In CAP, that channel is the set of alerts from one particular alerting authority. So an alerting authority will have a set of alerts, and that goes out as an RSS channel. OK, now you might think, well, actually, we'd like to have two. We want one in English and one in Spanish. Fine. You have two, <laughs> we just distinguish them by uh, the, the language code. Then for each RSS news item, that corresponds within the channel to one particular cap alert. So a series of cap alerts is a channel where every item is another alert. News feeds always have most recent first. It's news. When they, the world of news, currency, how, how, what's the latest is the big thing. So it's in order by most recent first. Now, this is a sidebar, but I'm just going to say it briefly. Has anybody ever heard of Atom? Actually, you may have seen it earlier with the National Weather Service. It's another format just like RSS. Um, I don't teach it in the class. I actually don't recommend you use it, but you can. Uh, and if you do, I think everybody who processes your cap 
will not have any problem with it. Those who are interested can talk to me offline on, on why I prefer RSS. The main reason is it's by far the most common. And the second reason is it will never change. It's a frozen standard. 10 years from now, I don't want you all to have to update your software because Adam has changed. So we like that. Normally, I like new technology, but not for standards, especially in emergency learning. OK, let's talk about the channel, which is the only thing you have. OK, the RSS XML format starts with RSS, and then it has an attribute, version 2. It's always version 2. Uh, those interested in version 1, that's a side discussion. It's gone. Version 2 is the frozen standard. There's only one channel, so the next element under RSS is channel. Um, that refers to a single source of CAP alerts. About the channel, so to inform people what is this channel, we have three required sub-elements. The title for the channel, the link, which is the URL for the channel, and a description which is typically the title with a little bit extra stuff about why, why did you create this uh, channel. In the software I'm going to give you this afternoon, we go further and we add in some optional sub-elements. One is language. If you do not specify, everybody thinks you're speaking English. Well, you might not be. <laughs> you might be speaking Arabic or Chinese or Spanish, so say so. So you'd say, Language ES. Copyright. You want your alerts to go out. You do not want people to be wondering whether they are allowed to use this information because there are some intellectual property constraints. So you're going to put in the copyright. The copyright's going to say public domain. We want it to go out, so don't let people get confused. We're going to fill in the publication date, the last bill date, and you'll see the rest of that. Now, I noted each cap alert is a news item. So we're going to have one item for each cap alert, most recent first. The channel can contain any number of item sub-elements. I recommend you do not use thousands. A couple hundred is fine. Um, it's your own choice, depending on how often you do alerting. Um, and to what extent you're aggregating from other people who alert frequently. We have, in addition to the title or description, we have for each one, we can fill in the link. We have to fill in the link because that's what people really want. They want to be able to find the alert from the feed, right? So your feed is saying, I've got like here, these 10 alerts. Here's one from yesterday, here's one from the day before, here's one from last week. That's what they're looking for, how to get those alerts. We also will fill in the author, the category, the globally unique ID, right, which is the cap identifier, and the date. You may find guidance out there in the real world that tells you you can use HTML stuff like bold and underline in the descriptions of your RSS feed. Do not do that. That is wrong. Even if it's coming from Google, it's wrong. It will work OK on Google, but for many, people will see your little Bs and Us, underline this HTML markup, and it makes you look like you don't know what you're doing, because it's, it's just sloppy. So don't do that. Also, your URL, please do not use a relative URL. Put the whole URL, because remember that style sheet? The style sheet will only work if they're on your site. Well, of course, they won't be on your site. You got aggregated by Google. You got aggregated by me. The National Weather Service, to this day, makes this mistake. So when you look at an alert from the National Weather Service of the US, it's XML. Because the style sheet that would have made it pretty is only if you happen to be getting it while at the National Weather Service site, because they forgot to use an absolute URL. So that's just a simple mistake. You could fix it. Anyhow, now let's look at how do you make an individual 
cap news item, given that you've already created the cap alert, right? We just didn't, in the last lesson, we set out to create a cap alert. So now we've got it. We've, we filled in some of the items. What do we do to make an item in the news feed? The item title, remember this is a news story. So what's the title of a news story? It's the headline. So the title of the item is cap headline. What's the link? Well, it's the URL that points to your file. What's the description? The cap description. What's the author? In cap, we call it sender. Category, we call it category in cap. Globally unique ID, that's this GUID thing. That's an identifier. CAP identifiers are globally unique, so that's the GUID. The publication date is in CAP called sent. It's the time at which you sent it. That's when it was published. OK, so that's how you go from a CAP alert to make a CAP news item. The software I'm giving you and the software that you would get from Medio France International, from MetCAP Plus, which is a very nice freeware for creating CAP, from the Google tool, they all do this automatically. Okay, so I'm just showing you what the content is. Um, in the real world, your tool will already be doing this, and you'll see this when we install the software later this afternoon. So that's what you end up with. Um, here's my geomagnetic storm alert. Let me just uh, point out, and I'm not going to go into depth, because we just talked about it in terms of the CAP alert individually. The CAP feed is XML. Again, the machines are the fussy side of the machine-human partnership. The fussy side, the machine, needs to have valid XML only. So you validate it. You can use the Google CAP validator. Remember we used this to validate a single alert? You could put into this validator the whole feed. So this is the whole Suriname CAP news feed. You put it in, you hit validate, and it'll tell you whether or not the feed is valid XML. Is the RSS valid XML? It will also, because it understands CAP, We'll look at each of your alerts and say, oh, and that alert is valid. Oh, that alert is valid. Oh, this alert is bad. OK, so you, you check the whole end to end with the same validator. Very nice tool for that. And there are other ones out there. I, I shouldn't make it seem like Google's the only one doing that. OK, so you make sure that it's valid. Now, when you publish your alert, it's also a good idea uh, not when you publish your alert, when you publish your feed, which is a series of cap alerts, to use the standard icon for news feeds. How many of you are using news feeds on your websites? Okay, good idea. Those of you who aren't, you should be. Search engines give much higher rankings if you just have at least one feed on your site. And that's because for search engines, they're all about, we want the, the most happening, most current stuff. OK. News feeds are exactly that. They're frequently updated works. So that tells the search engine, ooh, that's a site people are going to keep coming back to because stuff is changing, as opposed to a static website. So whether or not you do CAP, you really ought to have feeds. <laughs> Make feeds on your site. And this is the icon that the human can see that, oh, there's a feed here. The computer, of course, knows it's a feed because it's in the XML. You should also put the icon that says, not only is it a news feed, which might be you know, sports news or it might be a weblog, this is a cap news feed. So use the cap icon. It was invented for exactly this reason. You can see that the icon even looks similar, right? Don't worry about that auto-subscribe stuff. It's a detail beyond here, and it, it's, it's done automatically. My next topic here is reliability, security, and authentication. 
and I'm going to skip it because it's exactly the same thing I said about individual cap alerts. You got to have the policies, the procedures, the technology to assure that you've got the level of security and reliability that's appropriate for what you're doing. And when it's life critical emergency alerting, that's a pretty high bar. So make sure you've got that stuff covered at the feed level as well as the individual cap alert level. OK. My next is just to run through a few examples. And uh, actually, we won't spend a lot of time on this. Here's the, the National Weather Service, which we talked about. Um, they're still on version 1.1, uh, but I believe that's changing in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but they've been saying that for months, <laughs> so any time now. Don't worry about it, though. The, version, the difference between version 1 and version 2, 1.1 and 1.2, uh, are fairly minor. The, the one thing that's really important, uh, I think, in 1.2 is the update specifically has all clear as a response type. So that's, that's a good thing to be able to call that out very unambiguously. Um, I've already mentioned that they have uh, thousands of these because they have them not only for each state uh, and county, but each National Weather Service forecast zone. Those are pretty tiny. When I look at the one for my home, um, it's less than a mile by a mile. <laughs> I mean, that's really specific. And you find other services like AccuWeather do the same thing. So there's lots of those. Uh, we talked about the earthquakes. Uh, that one happens to be U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, we have volcanoes, um, landslides, et cetera, from USGS. We also have the geomagnetic storm, as you saw. In Canada, um, it's, it's an interesting situation in that the um, national level service for disseminating CAP alerts or disseminating alerts for the weather is not Environment Canada. Environment Canada prepares the CAP alert, but they don't do the last mile distribution. That's done by a private company called Palmerix. And they pick up the CAP alert and they rejigger it to get to the appropriate television, radio, cell broadcast now, digital signage, et cetera. So it's an interesting public private collaboration um, in Canada. Uh, at the provincial level, uh, we have, for example, the province of Alberta in Canada does its own cap alerts. Um, and here's a, also an example of a city. Uh, there are many more uh, as well, but those are just to give you a sense of it. Lots and lots of cap feeds out in the real world. Um, so review the key points. Really simple syndication. It's an XML document. Its purpose is for frequently updated works in cap. We make each of our alerts correspond to one news item in the feed, most recent first. Okay, And the key piece of a feed is the link that takes you to the individual cap alert. In fact, I think from a technology viewpoint, we can say the feed is really just a directory of alerts in most recent order. That's really all we have to care about. There's some other descriptive thing there, but that's for humans to read. From a technology viewpoint, we're just using it to fetch the actual alerts. We have to um, assure that our stuff is uh, valid at the feed level as well as the individual cap alert level. And again, the Google Cap Validator is a very easy way to do that. You will see this afternoon that's built into this, the freeware I'm giving you as well. And I gave you a few examples. So uh, this is what you have learned um, in terms of a, of a test to see if you've got the uh, skills and, uh, and knowledge that you were supposed to get. But in the classroom setting, we don't force you through that. So there's my standard set of uh, links for reference material. And at this point, we're just about 11.55. So I have four minutes for questions before you're allowed to go to lunch at 12. Anybody have any questions? So what we've gone through, yeah, I think, 
is why should you be interested in CAP? What could it do for you? Okay, and we've talked about the kind of things that you get, the, the, the external services that you leverage by doing it, the ability to gather things together inside your own country or city or whatever so that people are doing things in a similar way. Then we talked about this concept of alerting authorities and making sure that that gets done right and that you're participating in this international system that lets all of this stuff play nice with each other. Okay, then I walked you through how do you create the content of an individual alert. And then we talked a set of alerts, which is just a bunch of those individual alerts, most recent first. Okay, so all you've got thus far is, I hope, CAP's pretty cool. I'd like to do that. Ooh, and it's not very hard because I've seen how to do that. This afternoon, what we're going to do once we finish our lunch is we're going to jump into, make sure I've got this right. Yeah, we're going to give you freeware so you can actually implement this right on the PC that you brought with you to this class. Assuming, and here I need a show of hands, do you have a PC that you have the ability to install software on and you want to try installing this? So raise your hand if that's true. And keep, raise your hand and keep it up. All right, I think we are good. What I'm looking for is, do you have your hand up? Or are you sitting next to a person who has their hand up? Okay, if that is not true for you, and I think the last row is a problem, what I want you to do when you come back from lunch is choose somebody to sit next to who has their hand up. So I want everybody to be either installing or looking over the shoulder, kibitzing, somebody who is installing, okay? So there's nobody who gets to just go do your email or something during this session. You're either doing it or you're helping somebody or you're working with somebody who is doing it. Okay, so you're going, a, a few of you are going to need to move around when we come back. Um, also, when we come back, I'm going to give you the software to do all of that. And it is specific to Windows. I see an Apple guy. How many people have other than Windows? If, if you have Linux or Apple? Yeah? OK. Um, those are not usually used as servers, but you could. But you'll have to go get for your Mac OS Tomcat. If you can find Tomcat, go ahead and install it. We'll be good to go. OK, if you can't find it, just, again, treat yourself as somebody who didn't have their hand up <laughs> and go sit next to them. In a virtual machine. Should, should be OK. OK. You mean the cap in, has already worked, or just the Tomcat? OK, yeah, I'll, OK. So I'm going to give, I, for all of you, you're going to get the cap editor software, but it, it runs on top of Apache Tomcat. I'm going to go through this this afternoon, um, which itself runs on top of Java. Good question, though, because the Java compiler actually comes in two flavors. Tomcat has only one, so whether it's 32 or 64 won't matter for Tomcat, but it does for Java. And, and I should also point out that you didn't install just the Java runtime. You actually have the Java compiler. OK. You can get Tomcat that just runs on Java runtime. We need the Java compiler version, because the software I'm giving you actually needs the Java compiler as well. Again, we're going to go through all that uh, as soon as you get back. But it sounds like you're all prepped and ready to go. Just, again, we're going to have you sit next to somebody. And I'm going to give you these USB sticks with all the software you need. And yeah, we should be good. OK, I think at this point, let me turn you back to um, whomever, Julia, who will tell you uh, where we're going for lunch.